questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And I'm so pleased that you brought up the process of vetting these sponsors because this is something that causes us a tremendous amount of concern and something that uh, news reports have covered. And periodically we will read about people that are improperly vetted. And of course, the issue we have right now with the 85,000 migrant children who cannot be found um, and much of that, uh, we've seen reports of these children working in factories. We have seen reports of these children being in processing plants, food processing plants. So uh, they're being used for labor. So Ms. Gaston, I know it's a little bit too much to do in a hearing and a five minute questioning. But what I would like for you to submit to the record is what you send to the states as best practices for vetting these individuals and also the amount of time that generally is spent on vetting these people who are going to be sponsors. These are vulnerable children and they are expecting someone to take care of them. And the fact that it is a check-the-box process, as has been reported in some instances. Um, I think we should all hope that we do better than that for these children. So if you will submit that for the record, I would appreciate that. So ACF is absolutely committed to the safety and well-being of the children that um, are served through our programs. Uh, ACYF has a purview over the child welfare system. My colleagues at the Office of Refugee Resettlement have purview over um, the sponsors I'm that I believe you're speaking that. to. And I will be working with them to make sure the information that you're requesting right. is submitted. We, we need to have that for the record because there should be a best practices. And we should not read more reports about children who are being used for child labor, children that are being put in sex trafficking rings, children who have sponsors who are improperly vetted and abuse them. We can do better than that. So thank you. Mr. Perez, let me come to you for a moment. Um, I've talked a little bit about the, the need for us to have more transparency, more accountability, more common sense solutions. And as we look at the persistence of trafficking, and especially <clears throat> the sex trafficking that takes place of children, and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations gave me a stat. Once every two minutes, a child in this country is bought or sold for sex. Once every two minutes. These are little ones. So when we talk about the things that are wrong, whether it's the migrant children, whether it's the foster children, whether it is children that are being recruited and groomed, if you were on this side of the dais and you said, here are some immediate things that you could do, what would you encourage? Where would you encourage us to go first? Thank you for the question, Senator. I would say, uh, number one, when we're talking about resources, um, there's, there's kind of a few lanes with that. We can always do more with more resources. Uh, we always want to be strategic with what we have and make sure we're implementing and aligning those resources properly. If I was going to point to one thing, one of our biggest challenges when we're talking about human trafficking, and I touched on some links to transnational organized crime, or let's say more sophisticated criminal actors operating in some organized fashion. Our biggest challenge across the board is the ability to defeat end-to-end -end encryption. Our, traditionally, our recipe for success in defeating criminal actors really across the board historically, lawfully identifying an organization, identifying ways to exploit communications, money movements, those kinds of things, and through lawful access, through legal process from the court, obtain proper information from you know, communications, those kinds of things. The ability to move to end-to-end -to -end encryption does not really require that much level of sophistication. Uh, many off-the-shelf applications accessible to children um, are, are 
end-to-end -end encrypted, our inability to exercise use of legal process to obtain that information, to identify the proper means and methods of a criminal organization to then defeat it, are incredibly hampered by the use of end-to-end -end encryption. So having the Report Act pass, which would require, um, would enable NCMEC to hold things that come in on the cyber tip line longer, would be helpful. Generally, ma'am, we try not to, to comment on pending legislation, but again, any, any ability to allow okay. us use of proper legal right. authority would be beneficial. That, that sounds good. Now, when you talk about transnational crime and identifying organizations, I've got to bring this forward again because I asked Director Ray about this a couple of weeks ago when he was before us. And we've got one of the biggest most well-known, most high-profile sex trafficking rings ever in this Jeffrey Epstein case. And Director Ray didn't give me a very complete answer when I asked about transparency around that case and about releasing those flight logs so we can know who all else is involved in this. And you talk about the need to get information from these organizations and information from the court, why would you not release these flight logs? Why would there be a protection of not going after releasing this information? Why would you not make public that information? Why would you not make public all of the video that has been captured from Jeffrey Epstein's Palm Beach townhouse, which the FBI has. Ma'am, I'm aware of the interaction with Director Ray from, I believe, last week or the week before. Our, our team would be happy to work on any formal responses. I'm not aware of any subpoenas that have come to the FBI for formal requests, but we No, you haven't gotten a subpoena because the chairman ended up adjourning twice before I could bring forward my request for a subpoena. But you're talking about the need, the need to get this information from these groups. And here you have a group, an organization, and we can't get the information. And it is just ridiculous that we are sitting here, we have laws on the books, we have expectations of agencies, and we have a need for information. You've got it. We can't get it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.